Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamazi here. This is going to be my patch 10.1 Demonology Warlock DPS guide. In it, we're going to be covering single target talents, AOE talents, class talents, tier sets, rotations in single target, as well as AOE, and a few other things along the way. Now, if you're looking for any weak ORS add-ons or profiles you see in the video, links to Twitch and Discord down below with all for free for you guys. Uh, links to Twitter and other various social media links appear, as well as Patreon, if you'd like to support me there. And with that being said, let's just jump right on into it. So getting into the Demonology Warlock class and spec tree here, very briefly the class tree, this is the general outline you follow for basically most content, barring a few points, a couple points here and there. And most of the time, if you want more utility, you can pull a point or two out of Fiendish Stride for, let's say, Banish, let's say if you want Dark Fury for a shorter cooldown on Shadow Fury and a larger radius. If you want to grab Nightmare or Horrify, you can pull a point or two out of here and put it one in Dark Fury, one in Banish, one down here in Profane Bargain if you want for more survivability. But for the most part, this structure here is typically the general structure you see. You've got a point in Fell Domination, a point in Burning Rush, two in Demon Skin, two in Fell Armor, Coil, Curses, Demonic Embrace and Demonic Fortitude for stamina increases, Demonic Inspiration and Wrath of Minion are both damage increases to the, your pets, Gateway, a defensive in Dark Packs, a, a, basically an increase to what Ending Resolve does for you, more defensiveness, Shadow Fury, Technique, and Sakathar's Gaia. Technique is a bit awkward for Demonology, I will say, due to the fact that Shadow Bolt is like 1% of your damage overall. It's much less than what it does for Destro and Aft. So if you want a lot of utility, you could pull points in this talent instead, or in addition to Fiendish Triad to get a lot of extra nodes in certain spots, but these are both damage increases. Then two points in Soul Conduit, two points in Synergy, one point in Inquisitor's Gaze, and one point in Soul Burn. Soul Burn is indeed a DPS increase for Demonology because it consumes the Soul Shard when your portal is active, unlike Destro and Aft, where it is not a DPS increase. Now, getting into the class tree here, there are five builds I want to show you, but most of them are very similar. They vary in single target versus AoE. This first build here is called the Reign of Tyranny Immutable Hatred Single Target Build. This build here, up until recently, with the bug fixes to Immutable Hatred, has been the highest in build I've seen for all of PTR testing. This build's playing Immutable Hatred. It's not playing Nerzul's or Gul'dan's, which is your Pit Lord. It is playing Hatred, which gives you more consistent damage, basically over the course of a fight. Not as high burst. You still burst very high, but not as high for more consistency. You're playing Tyrant, Reign of Tyranny. You're playing Vile Fiend, Demonic Strength, uh, Grim or Felguard, obviously, and the usual culprits in single target. Now you're playing one point here in Nether Portal. This is just, it is the best Point you can put for single target in, as your last point it's a three minute cooldown every other tyrant will have a portal with it and it is still a, de a decent dps increase even without your pit lore being part of it this is a pure single target build there's some cleave and fell storm and things passively but if you want more cleave elements like implosion like houndmaster stratagem like dreadlash you can indeed shift to a build like this the ray of tyranny immutable hatred cleave build which brings implosion it brings dreadlash and it brings Houndmaster Stratagem. No Vile Fiend, no Fell Sunder, which is a bit of a an iffy part. There's still some experimental talents here. I'm playing this. I'm playing Portal, essentially, instead of Fell Sunder. No Shadow Spite, grabbing Implosion. And that is the gist of it. Still maintaining, once again, Immutable Hatred, single target. Still playing Reign of Tyranny. Still playing Portal for that big three-minute cooldown. Now, you could change a few things here as well. If there's more single target emphasis than a mix of stat cleave and single target, you could pull a point here from Calling and put it in Vile Fiend for more single target. It does more damage than this in pure single target anyways. And it also empowers your Tyrant more with Reign of Tyranny. But Calling will likely bring more consistent, sustained AoE on a fight like Zakali Assault in the first part. But in Phase 2... It's mostly single target. So you gotta sort of pick and choose here. It might vary a little bit. But regardless, this is the structure, whether you want cleave or single target, for the Reign of Tyranny, Immutable Hatred builds. Now, if you're looking at more of a Pit Lord base build, this is the Nether Portal Pit Lord Reign of Tyranny single target build. Not much changes here in single target. You're just pulling points from here, from Infernal Command and from Immutable Hatred, and putting it in Nurse's Volition and Gul'dan's Ambition. This gives you a Pit Lord with every Nether Portal being once every three minutes. This build bursts incredibly high, six, 700k DPS, and then sustains very, very little outside of your 
nether portals and outside of your tyrant talking 50 60k dps but it bursts incredibly high and those damage profiles are quite often highly sought after in progression based settings to burst through a phase burst through ad spawning burst through a shield whatever what have you they're often highly sought after this makes demonology uh, an exceptionally strong power infusion target and well yeah that's the world we live in now just like the hatred build if you want more cleave based elements you can shift a few things here this is the pure single target build no dread lash no implosion no uh, how much stratagem if you like more cleave just shift a few points here shifting a point from here to here no vile fiend putting it in dread lash and putting a point up here as well not in expendables putting it up here in stratagem now you could pull a point from sunder to put it back in expendables once again it's customizable if you want a bit more single target again you can pull this point here and put it in vile fiend it depends on how much single target emphasis you want in whatever setting you're in it can still bring good cleave but if it's a bit more single target based you might want vile fiend on a certain fight over calling in the next fight if it's similar but a bit more cleave based maybe you want calling or vile fiend but this build gets implosion this build gets dread lash this build gets stratagem and it still gets another portal pit lord ring of tyranny and and torrent armaments now this build here in its single target version is basically neck and neck with the highest I mean, build that i've seen in single target this build here being uh, i think 108k this build here the saxholes build being this build about 200 ish dps higher than the non saxholes build we just looked at this build is currently the highest in build this build is much more annoying to play you're playing the covenant you're playing saxholes this build is much 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 less forgiving when it comes to single target if this buff falls it is very annoying stacking it again in combat trying to maintain other pet cycles with tyrant setups to a similar extent it also greatly devalues saxholes when it falls you really don't cast many shadow bolts as demonology you might think you do once again you really don't we mentioned it it's mostly demon bolts through demonic knowledge or demonic corp rocks right from dog expiring from imp expiring from hand of ghoul dance proccing it from demonic knowledge you really don't cast shadow with a lot and if this buff falls or you die and have to restack it it is an actual nightmare this builds also much harder to customize in a cleave setting because you really want shadow spite for that damage increase to demon bolt because you're playing Bell covenant you're playing saxols it's harder to find points for implosion it's harder to find points for dread lash so with this build being the highest swing build from what i have seen in my own sims by a couple hundred dps comparatively to this build here i am going to play this build right here the non fell covenant non saxholes build the pit lord build it might not sustain as much it should burst a bit higher it's much more friendly to play user friendly and uh honestly it's just more enjoyable as well fell covenant and saxholes is not fun at all and the last build i want to look at here for demonology is going to be the guillotine non nether portal build which is more of a mythic plus build on those fortified weeks uh weeks where you want a bit more maybe aoe emphasis and that build looks something like this now i will say at the same time you can very easily this is more of a general plus build for the most part you're not only playing portal and mythic plus you end up playing typically fell sunder and either guillotine or immutable hatred i am out of builds to put in here but you can just customize it the way you want uh more often than not on four to five weeks guillotine is a great investment it was buffed in patch 10.0.7 to be a shorter duration six seconds down from eight but they increased the damage by 200 percent giving it a much more potent output on a relatively short cooldown this is where i'd probably start on four to five weeks in season two guillotine still playing ring of tyranny but playing fell sunder as well over another portal and to a similar extent if you're looking at a tyrannical week you can just go hey i want to play immutable hatred as well both of these work in the opposite settings right guillotine still worth casting in single target hatred you can still play it if, you're, it's, if it's a port week it won't give you insane aoe value but it gives you more single target value if it's a tyrannical week right so it works both ways but i would start with this likely guillotine fell sunder over nether portal and over hatred in fortified aoe settings mythic plus if you're looking for more of a tyrannical setting you can just swap back again to immutable hatred playing sunder over portal and plus they're both customizable they're both good and honestly demo's a lot of fun to play in plus regardless of the build you're playing
Now, getting into Demonology's tier set in patch 10.1, it is a very strong one, quite possibly the strongest of any spec currently heading into patch 10.1. And depending on tuning, it is going to be a high priority to feed your Demo Locks their tier set above most other classes on their token. The two-piece states Demon Bolt deals 15% additional damage, straight up. On top of that, consuming a Demonic Core reduces the cooldown of Grimoire Felguard by one second. Now, Grimoire Felguard is a baseline two-minute cooldown. It's right here. You play it in basically every build. Demonic Cores are instant cast Demon Bolts. They're from Demonic Knowledge at times. They, they can happen whenever Imps expire at times. You always get three Demonic Cores whenever your Dreadstalkers expire as well. Typically, if you're or also from Power Siphon, Demonology is always swimming in Demonic Core stacks. It's very rare that the majority of the time you cast many more Demon Bolts than you cast Shadow Bolts. So this... Typically, this two-piece reduces Grimoire to right around the 1 minute 30 second mark, which is pretty cool. It syncs up perfectly with your Summon Demonic Tyrant and Reign of Tyranny. Now, on top of that, it gets even better. The four-piece states Grimoire Felgar deals 20% more damage, so it's doing more damage more often due to the two-piece. Plus, while Grimoire Felgar is active, all of your demons, all of them, including the Pit Lord, deal 20% additional damage, all of them, Pit Lord, everything. And this bonus, this bonus is basically getting a second Demonic Tyrant. Demonic Tyrant increases pet damage by 15%. Grimoire increases it by 20. And now every single Tyrant has a Grimoire in it due to the two piece and the actual baseline duration being a minute and a half because you're playing Reign of Tyranny and not Grand Warlock's design. On top of that, this makes Demonology an exceptionally strong PI target uh, on pull if it lines up with your Tyrant. Because of how strong the effects are, your pets are out, they're all amplified with the haste amp. Demos 2-piece, 4-piece is very, very strong. It makes the spec feel very fun to play, having basically large cooldowns, hitting Grimoire with every Tyrant, with every set of dog. Every Tyrant has a Grimoire in it, a Biofiend, a set of dogs, and multiple imps. Demo feels like an actual Master Summoner with this 2-piece, 4-piece. And hey, the two-piece tacking on a bit of demolt damage doesn't hurt either. It's a very strong bonus in single target, in AoE, certainly stronger than the one we've seen in both of the incarnates. So when it comes to Demonology's single target opener, whether you're playing Nether Portal with Pit Lord and Gul'dan's or you're playing Immutable Hatred, they're actually both the same. You're still playing Portal regardless in both builds. One has Pit Lord, one does not. Here's the Pit Lord build, here's the non-Pit Lord build. But the only thing that changes are these two talents here. And these just help with, with sustained damage. And that's it. It doesn't change anything rotationally. So with that being said, this opener is universal across both the Hatred build and the Portal build. If you're playing the Cleave build that might not play Biofiend and plays Implosion and things, you can implode when you need to in stat Cleave and all that. But still, the opener for both builds, both variations is pretty much exactly the same. So we're going to look at the Pit Lord build here. Nether Portal, Pit Lord, Reign of Tyranny in single target. This build has a tremendous amount of burst with your portal and a good bit of burst whenever you Tyrant due to Reign of Tyranny. Now we're playing Power Siphon here. This gives you two stacks of Demonic Core whenever you hit the button. So you're going to pre-cast Power Siphon for the boss's pull to have two stacks here. It's important to keep in mind your imps do expire. They expire every once in a while from Inner Demons. Having this talent enables you to pre-cast Siphon because two Imps are active. So I have a tracker here. It's a weak aura. It shows two Imps active. One's going to expire in five seconds. It's important to keep an eye on that when you're casting Power Siphon. The big thing here with Nether Portal, you want to cast as many individual shard consuming spells as possible during the portal. It's not based off the number of shards spent. It's based off the number of shard consuming spells that are tasked with portal being open. It's very awkward. It's backwards compared to what demonology usually is about. That is why soul burn is important. Soul burn is an, it's an instant cast spell off the GCD and consumes a soul shard. So basically you want to open the portal immediately go soul burn and then cast other spells that on their own individually also consume spells. So, that being said, let's get into it. Might be a little hard to follow, but there's a tracker down here that shows my individual cast. I'll probably put text in the screen somewhere as well. But yeah, so let's do it. We're going to wait for my next, imp to, my next imp to spawn here. Should spawn momentarily. You're going to pre-cast two Shadow Bolts before the boss is pulled. There's that. We're going to Power Siphon. So say we're pulling the boss now. Shadow Bolt. Shadow Bolt. Nether Portal. Soul Burn. Grimoire Felguard. Summon Vile Fiend. Call Dreadstalkers. Demon Bolt. 
Hand of Gul'dan. Demon Bolt. Hand of Gul'dan. Trinkets, potions, whatever. Tyrant. Then Hand of Gul'dan. Hand of Gul'dan. For two final summons. There it is. You can Demonic Strike now. Start casting normal three shard Hand of Gul'dans and watch your damage spike here. There's the Pit Lord. That's the big damage he brings. 170, 180. This is why Demo is so incredibly bursty. For that insane profile right there. A lot of RNG in it if your Pit Lord crits versus not. But you've got Tyrant cranking with Reign of Tyranny. You've got all your pets out. You've got your two-piece, four-piece giving you more pet damage, which increases Pit Lord damage. You've got an insane amount of burst, and then you drop like a rock outside of CDs. Outside of that, you're casting dogs on CD. You can cast one Vile Fiend between every Tyrant playing Reign of Tyranny, because Tyrant's a minute and a half. Vile Fiend's 45. Outside of that, casting three-shard Hand of Dance. You can cast Power Siphon on cooldown as long as you don't overcap on shards, like I did right there. Or overcap on, I guess, stacks, other way. Hand of Gul'dan's three shards. Cast dogs on cooldown here. Besides that, the one thing, keep in mind your four-piece, your, your tier bonus, basically. Your two-piece reduces your, your cooldown on Grimoire Felguard for every demonic core you cast. Cast demonic threat and cooldown here as well. So my Grimoire Felguard has surpassed my Tyrant as far as cooldowns are concerned, right? Keep casting here. It surpasses it more and more. Bolt right there. I'm going to cast dogs here. Now, the big thing is that you're going to want to basically set up every Tyrant in combat with a Grimoire. It works out that way. Every single Tyrant will have a Grimoire in it, right? So let's say it's off cooldown now, which it is. We can go Grimoire, Shadow Bolt the 5, Vial Fiend, Shadow Bolt the 5 again here, call Dread Stalkers, and then go Hand, Demon Bolt, Hand, Demon Bolt, watching pet timers here, Hand of Gul'dan, Tyrant, catching all the pets here with extension, and watch your damage climb again. We're at 90k, but Tyrant's out. Two pieces active, four pieces active, big pet damage, climbing 100k plus now again. And the next Tyrant you have, at the 3 minute mark, will have a portal with it again. So you'll have that massive burst profile again in about, I don't know, minute and a half roughly. And that's the gist of Demonology. You, you always cast three short handed Gul'dans unless you're in your Tyrant or Portal setup. You cast dogs on cooldown. You can cast one Vile Fiend between every Tyrant. Cast a Monitoring on cooldown unless you're holding it for some point in the fight. Every Tyrant, as long as you have your tier bonus, being your two-piece, will have a Rim War Fellow Guard in it. Every other Tyrant, as long as you're playing another Portal, will have another Portal set up. Now, let's say you opt to play a build that's playing still Reign of Tyranny in single target, but for whatever reason, not playing Nether Portal. The opener is similar. You're still building into a large Tyrant, but you're not casting one shard hand to Gul'dan's. So for example, let's say you're pulling the boss. You have your two stacks of Demonic Core from Power Siphoning, which we get right now. Same, similar opener, cast two Shadow Bolts, pre-cast Shadow Bolt, pre-cast Shadow Bolt, Grim War Felguard, Shadow Bolt back to five shards here, Vial Fiend, Shadow Bolt again back to five, Cast called Dread Stalkers. Typically, I'll Demon Bolt back to five. Then go Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt, Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt, Hand of Gul'dan if you can. Then summon Demonic Tyrant, Trinkets and Potions, everything before that. And then just keep going here. Now, you cast Demonic Strength at this point, And that very well might depend on your haste levels. You might not be able to get that one final Hand of Gul'dan cast in that opener. It depends on procs and things too. That's Demonology's opener. It's very important to learn how to react to procs, whether it's Demonic Calling, a Demonic Core Stack, Soul Conduit Refunds, and to min-max the amount of pets you can get into every single Tyrant. Outside of that, it's the normal rotation, three, or, three shard Hand of Gul'dan's casting dogs on cooldown. Once again, playing Ray of Tyranny, you can get one Vile Fiend in between each Tyrant cast being basically a minute and a half for tyrant and 45 seconds for vile fiend and besides that it's like i said just three shard handy gold dance casting shadow bolts to fill casting power siphon when you can to get stacks of demonic core so you can just get more value out of you know a demonic core cast now from what i've seen it's very very close to cast demonic strength on cooldown it being a minute cooldown versus holding it for demonic tyrant being a minute and a half it's basically one and the same. So I'm suggesting to cast it on cooldown for the most part, if it's not synced with your Tyrant. However, it sort of goes both ways, and I wouldn't fault you for either. Like I mentioned before, with your four piece, two piece, four piece giving you Grimoire Felgar reduction, you should have Grimoire Felgar back off cooldown basically about now, which I do. So we can build to five shards here, cast our Grimoire Felgar, Shadow Bolt, Vile Fiend. We'll Shadow Bolt, we'll cast a set of called Dread Stalkers here, and then go Demon Bolt, Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt, Hand of Gul'dan, 
Demon Bolt, Hand of Gul'dan, and once again, Summon Demonic Tyrant, catching all of my pets, and that is your in-combat Tyrant setup. And it's pretty much rinse and repeat. Once again, every other Tyrant has a... Every other nether, every other Tyrant is, a, is a Nether Portal Tyrant, if you're playing Nether Portal. If not, it's the same setup every single time, and that is the gist of Demonology. Making sure you min-max around Tyrant setup and things in combat, min-maxing your pets, getting the most value out of it, and making the largest Tyrant possible. So when it comes to Demonology Warlock and AoE, we are an exceptionally potent class at Stat Cleave and even like single target prio Stat Cleave. That is through Felstorm, Demonic Strength, Dreadlash, your dogs chomping basically, Houndmaster Stratagem, Implosion, Imp Gang Boss, and all the elements that Demonology brings, including also Dread Calling. Now, whether you're playing Guillotine or Hatred, if you're playing Guillotine, throw the Guillotine down in AoE when your Tyrant's out. If not, throw it down when you can and cool down. It's pretty simple. It's an AoE button, you hit it. The core part of Demonology's AoE is based around Implosion. Now, up until Dragonflight, there used to be a general rotation you follow, where it was like 9 to 12 imps, 6 to 9, 12 imps, and then you'd implode. However, with the introduction of Imp Gang Boss, this talent here, there's a chance to summon an Imp Gang Boss, which is a larger imp. When you implode the Imp Gang Boss and it dies, and when it dies from the implosion, it will summon a Wild Imp. That Wild Imp has a chance, once again, to be an Imp Gang Boss. Now, the only way you get an imp when an imp gang boss expires, whatever, is by imploding it. If the imp gang boss expires passively by just casting fireballs and dying, there is no chance to get an imp from that. It has to be imploded. So in two or more stacked targets, implosion is a DPS gain. Now, the general rule of thumb now with implosion is to implode before your imp gang bosses start expiring to guarantee more imps. The imp gang boss is incredibly RNG. At times I've had 20 imps out and 15 have been imp gang bosses. At times I've had 25 imps out and three have been imp gang bosses. I would highly encourage a weak aura to track this. I have one here once again in my Wago, Twitch and Discord links down below if you want that. It's right here. It'll show regular imps with a green bar here. If it's an imp gang boss, it'll be a blue bar. There's a number here that shows the total number of imps that are out, which is two. There's a number up here which shows the number of imp gang bosses that are out if one spawns. That is that perfect. That's an imp gang boss. One imp gang boss, two imps total. This is the imp gang boss bar. This is the regular imp bar. And when there's more imps out, it's easier to see when they start casting fireballs, this bar will go down and down and down. When they get ready to expire, that means you implode them. So normal opener here, I guess we're heading into a trash pack, whatever, we have CDs. We'll have some core stacks out. Uh, so we're gonna power stack in here, it's fine. Uh, we're basically normal opener. We're playing Hatred here. If you're playing Guillotine, just throw it down with Tyrant. It's fine. Uh, you're going to go into a pack with five shards. Let's say we have this. We have Grim War and everything. You're going to just pop your Grim War. Just bolts here to five. Cast Red Stalkers. Cast a Demon Bolt. And just go Hand of Gul'dan. Demon Bolt. Hand of Gul'dan. Hand of Gul'dan. Potions, Trinkets, whatever. You can Tyrant. Cast the Hand of Gul'dan. Cast Demonic Strength. Cast your Guillotine if you want. And look at my Imps here. So I have... 11 imps out now, 14 total. Six are imp gang bosses. Still casting hand to ghoul dance here, three shards or more. Casting some bolts, casting a hand here. They're all frozen from tyrant being out, but tyrant's done now. So watch them start expiring, right? Here they go. I'm gonna implode basically now. And once again, I get 10 imps back and five are imp gang bosses. So you'll keep casting here once again, hand to ghoul dance, whatever. When they're gonna expire, implode again. I got five imps back again. So I basically got. 15 imps back for free there without casting hand of the Gul'dan. So you can see how it shifted to playing much more around imp gang boss comparatively to just being, all right, nine imps implode. Nine imps implode, right? Besides that in AoE, you're casting dogs on cooldown. Once again, just building into hand of Gul'dan cycles into imploding with imps being out. Implosion in two or more stack targets is a DPS gain. Casting Tyrant on cooldown and just following normal Tyrant setups. That's pretty much it. Demonology in AoE is actually very simple. Just getting the hang of it is the harder part, but realistically, it isn't that bad either. It's pretty straightforward. Now, very briefly getting into stat priorities, trinkets, and embellishments for the next patch for Demonology, I want to encourage you to run your own sims on raid bots. It'll vary for, your, for everyone's character. It's not the same across the board. To a similar extent, these things change often with tuning. I can tell you what's good right now, but it might change tomorrow. So check 
Wowhead, my website for the most recent up-to-date sims and or just best combinations of talents and trinkets and embellishments and all that. Heading into the patch, if things went live the way they are right now, your highest simming trinkets for demonology playing the pit lore build looks to be Clash Trinket across the board. Everything is everything is Clash Trinket here. Clash Trinket, Fragment, Clash Trinket, Talon, Clash Trinket, Spoils. Highest Trinket looks to be Iridius Fragment from Halls of Infusion, followed by Time Breaching Talon, Spoils of Notharius, then Vessel, Igneous Flowstone, Black Dragon Scale, so on and so forth. And that should just about wrap it up. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully to answer the questions you might have had about Demonology Warlock heading into patch 10.1, Aberus, and Season 2 of Mythic Plus. Like I said, Demonology looks pretty strong next patch uh, in Aberus. In Mythic Plus, I think we're sort of middle of the pack. The AB nerfs that came into Demo about a month or so ago, I don't think we really needed or warranted. We're not bad. We're a pretty good... I think Demo is like your best universal pug spec when it comes to Warlock. In the higher end, where you can get a lot of Inferno, Rain of Fire value, Destro is likely a little better. But Demo has consistent damage. Tyrant every minute, minute and a half. Dogs chomping, Bell Storms, Demonic Strengths, Implosions, Imp Gang Boss, all the above. It's just solid. And Guillotine, if you want. Or Hatred, right? It's very customizable and good at what it does. So... If you guys have any questions, put it down below in the comment section. I'll be sure to get back to you. To a similar extent, any weak wars add-ons or profiles on the video, links to Twitch and Discord down below with all for free for you guys. And I also want to give one final shout out again to my patrons for all supporting Patreon, guys. Thank you a million times. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you're looking at supporting on Patreon, there should be a link up here as well as down below in the video description. I am excited to play Demonology in patch 10.1. It looks good. Uh, I'm more from a avarice perspective, like I said. I'm curious to see where it lands, if there is more tuning. If things do change a bit tuning-wise, or builds change a crazy amount, I'll update the, I guess I'll update the comment section of this video if there's a new video out or something big changes. But for the most part, I think we're close up to the patch launching where if there's tuning, it'll likely be mid-raid or at a point where it's not incredibly impactful. It'll be impactful mid-raid, but you know what I mean. Uh, hopefully it's not impactful enough where it changes builds or anything. But we'll see where it goes. 10.1 is close, and I am pumped to play Demonology. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to catch you all again soon on stream. Peace.